In this video, I'm talking about why I love DC Comics. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them. All for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Now, this show is called Why I Love, where I wax poetic about all the things I love about the comic book medium. Now, I know, on YouTube, it's really, really popular to like just rage on about the things that you hate and to get a bunch of people like to hate things because you hate them and so on. And this series is kind of my answer to that. As opposed to giving a bunch of energy to things that I don't like or don't want to see, I would rather share the things that I love and, you know, galvanize my audience behind that, right? Like bond with people online over the things that we share that we love, not things we share that we hate, because that's just whack. And this is a whackness free zone here on the BJ Kicks channel. So today, I'm talking about why I love DC Comics. Now, before I get any further into this, I have to say on this channel, just in case this is your first time here, I talk about comics a lot. I buy them, I read them, I review them. So you'll see haul videos, you'll see in-depth reviews, you'll see discussions and live streams, we do giveaways, all that type of stuff. So if you're interested in that type of content, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell icon so that you're notified whenever I post new videos. Now. Now that all that's out of the way, I want to start off by saying this is not an I hate Marvel video. First of all, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I can't hate Marvel because I love Spider-Man and I love the X-Men, as evidenced by this little wall whoop, over there behind me, right? So I'd certainly enjoy Marvel Comics, um, and we'll talk a little bit about what I feel are the differences between the two publishers, um, but this video is specifically about why I love DC, and that maybe instead of calling it why I love DC, maybe this is how I fell in love with DC or how I got into DC Comics and why I haven't left. So I actually wrote down a list of things that I love about DC Comics just to keep me on track, uh, but we'll have to talk about how I got into DC Comics. And really, the first reason I love DC Comics is it's pretty obvious. Batman, Batman, Batman. My favorite character in comics is Batman. Like, bar none. Like, if I had to stop reading every comic book ever, except one title, I would read Batman. And it's it's not even close, right? Like, you guys can see the omnibus behind me. I've got so many Batman books it's not even funny. But anyway, so if I could only read one character at a time or for the rest of my life, it would be Batman. And that's pretty cool because Batman honestly has enough stories. Like it's a running joke in the comic community that there's like 18 Batman titles at all times. Like there's almost always three Batman books that end up in my pull list every week. So there's definitely some Batman overload. But anyway, because I love Batman so much, that brought me into the DC universe. I wanted to know more about these other characters, and it kind of spreads into the next point, right? As much as I love Batman, that love for Batman comes from the Batman animated series from the early 90s. Um, and I love that series. And that series marks the start of the DC animated universe, the Bruce Tim verse, as some of us call it. Um, and that series, I mean, we had Batman, we had Batman Beyond, we had uh, the Superman, the animated series, and that all uh, split. We had Static Shock that technically took place in that same universe. Um, we had, uh, what was it, Justice League? and then Justice League Unlimited, and then a bunch of DC animated movies that all spawned from this Batman the Animated Series universe. And they're all really, really good. Like, I love going through and watching old Justice League episodes. I love watching old Justice League Unlimited episodes on HBO Max. Um, I had the DC Universe app when back when they were the only place to like stream all that stuff in one place. And I love it. And so, because I love animated uh, series and movies so much, DC just has a huge library of animated movies. Marvel has some. They're not 
as good. Uh, and the Marvel animated series are kind of all over the place. There's like 18 Spider-Man series in the last like 10 years. Like it's crazy, right? But I loved, you know, the DC animated universe and specifically their line of movies that they kind of dubbed the New 52. So there is a full continuity extended universe um, that kind of starts with this Justice League origin or Justice League War movie and goes on and on. And it kind of adapts a bunch of different stories from the comics. What I love about the DC animated movies is that for the most part, they're pretty faithful to the comics that they, you know, are adapting. So if you like the DC animated movie, chances are you're going to like the comic. And that is exactly what's gotten me into DC so much, right? Now, we've talked about the DC animated universe, and that's one of the reasons I love DC comics. Um, now, let's talk about kind of like just going from comics and other, or excuse me, going from TV shows and movies and other media to the comics that kind of inspire everything, right? What I love about DC Comics is that when I was a new reader, and I still consider myself a new reader, I've only been in comics about two years, right? And so the way I would try to get into comics is I would search, you know, top 10 this universe stories or this character stories, right? And you'd find all these rundowns on YouTube. And what I love is that DC has an amazing collection of easily accessible stories, right? For any character that you can name, somebody is going to tell you, oh, pick up this trade paperback. It's a great story. It's a short story. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the character, right? And I've got some in front of me, right? So this is uh, JLA Tower of Babel. Now, this uh, book was adapted into the movie Justice League Doom, and it's just a great story uh, showing the ramifications of Batman keeping contingency plans against every member of the Justice League. Very cool, right? We've got Green Lantern Rebirth. I'm not a big Green Lantern fan, but this tells you everything you need to know about Hal Jordan. This reiterates that Hal Jordan is the greatest lantern of all time and gives you some other lore to hang on to. If you like are excited about it, Jeff Johns started his run with this. And so you can go a lot deeper after. Right. And then here lately, you guys have been seeing me pick up these DC Eagle Moss collections through mystery boxes. But there's a bunch of iconic stories iconic graphic novels that are like six to 10 issues or less, right? So here we go. We got New Teen Titans, The Judas Contract. And this was and it was adapted into the Young Justice animated series, right? Um, but a super iconic story. I mean, yeah, you could read the entire New Teen Titans run, but this story is honestly enough to get the gist of what the characters are about. Um, and it goes on and on. I mean, we got DC, the new frontier. I got Superman, uh, earth one. What I love about DC comics is that while yes, their continuity can be kind of wonky. A lot of their best stories don't really rely on or lean into the continuity. So you can enjoy a lot of these really good DC stories without worrying about where does this fit into the timeline? Does this person really exist anymore or did they exist back then or could they have, right? And I can name so many stories. The Killing Joke. More recently, Three Jokers, right? There's so many stories. When I was looking to get into Marvel characters and the reason I stayed away from Marvel for so long, even when I had a monthly pull list, is I just did not know which books I should have been reading. I didn't know what mattered, right? When I got to the shop, there were like four different Spider-Man books. There was a Spider-Man book based on the video game. There was the current Amazing Spider-Man run. There was a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. There was Spectacular Spider-Man. And there's Spider-Man, like there's so many Spider-Man books. And so it's like, well, if I watch Spider-Man on TV, which Spider-Man is for me? And a lot of people can't necessarily answer that. What I've noticed is that when you ask someone about great Marvel stories, they will suggest to you to read a particular run of a story. And a run is like a, a run or a, <laughs> a series of comics by a single writer or a writer and artist team. Runs can go 
60, 70, 80, 100 issues, right? And so when I was asking people where to start with Spider-Man, they were like, oh, pick up the Ultimate Spider-Man. Well, Ultimate Spider-Man ran well over 100 issues. A lot of them are hard to find. It's not easily collected. There's like 20 trade paperbacks. And there's not like one short, easily accessible story that people really point to because you got to know so much about continuity, right? You can't just read the death of Gwen Stacy. I mean, you could, but you want to know why Gwen Stacy is so important, right? So there's a bunch of stuff that you have to know in order to kind of keep up with Marvel Comics. The exception to that, at least from what I've seen, is the House of X and Powers of Ten, this new jumping on point for the X-Men. Um, and that's part of the reason I'm such a big X-Men fan now is because I just happened to come in at exactly the right time. Um, but anyway, this isn't a why I don't like Marvel, because I do love Marvel. But uh, DC just had so many uh, good jumping on points for me as a new reader. Um, in 2011, they had the New 52, where they basically restarted every book from number one. Eventually, continuity issues kind of plagued that series, and it kind of fell off the rails. And so then they did Rebirth, where they still kind of did like a soft reboot of everyone in the universe. But for me as a newcomer to comics in 2019, it was very easy for people to say, oh, we'll just start with Rebirth number one. And because DC had their stream, their uh, yeah, their streaming service or their uh, their subscription service, I could go back and kind of pick up a number one, you know, and get into a character or not based on that number one or that first kind of six issues. Well, Marvel doesn't have those same jumping on points. Apparently, they started it with Marvel now, but kind of abandoned it. Abandoned it. Uh, the Ultimate Universe was supposed to be something cool to get people into it, but they abandoned that. And so much of it is like so tied into continuity that it's just, it's difficult. For me, it's difficult to get into some of the older or classic Marvel. A lot of times it feels like, so yeah, with Marvel, a lot of times it feels like, you know, you had to be there when it happened in order to enjoy these stories. Um, or you got to pick up the omnibus. I'm, I literally have like six seven X-Men omnibus because someone said, well, you got to read the Chris, Chris Claremont run. And Chris Claremont's run was like 30 years on X-Men, right? But because I feel like I'm an X-Men super fan, I'll make that investment. Most people wouldn't. So that's one thing I love about DC. Um, easily accessible stories, whether the cla they're the classic material that you have heard about time and time again, or even the new ongoing series, they have easily or they have easy jumping on points. And that's super important to me as a newer reader. Now, the last reason that I love DC Comics, and this is going to be a more DC versus Marvel thing, right? I feel like DC Comics has more compelling characters, even though Marvel Comics tends to have cooler characters, right? Like when you look at DC Comics, a lot of times their characters, they kind of just dwell in these classic archetypes, right? You've got the strong, silent dude who has questionable motives, right? You got Batman, you got Superman who represents like feet or excuse me, hope and light, right? You got Green Lantern who represents will and the absence of fear or courage, right? You've got Diana, Wonder Woman, who just represents like bravery and passion. Um, and then, you know, that touch of femininity, right? And you've got these really iconic characters. You've got these really compl compelling and classic characters who can kind of teach you lessons every single time they step out, right? When I read a good Batman story, I like, I feel like I'm learning to use my intelligence and to never give up and to always be persistent, right? Same with Superman, like Superman, as much as he's like this big, strong dude, he's not always using like his toughness to get through. And what really appeals to me about Superman is how in touch he is emotionally and how compassionate he is about the people that he's protecting and so on and so on. A lot of times when I'm reading Marvel stories, I'm not like taking away lessons from them. I don't, it's not like when you 
when you read like a nursery rhyme to a kid and there's a moral to the story. A lot of times when I'm reading Marvel books, it was just a cool thing that happened, right? I'm loving Donny Cates' Venom run, right? I've been reading up on that. I think I'm like 18 issues in, but it took all the way up until issue, I would say 16 for me to care emotionally about what Eddie Brock had going on with him and his son or brother, whatever you want to call him. And I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll leave it there, right? The rest of the book was just Venom doing cool things and interacting with Eddie in interesting ways, right? And so a lot of times when you pick up Marvel comics, it's like, yo, look at the powers that dude has. Look at Wolverine slicing up people, right? Look at that that thing that they did over there. But it's not necessarily like a story that you take away anything from. It was just entertaining while you read it. And so I love DC Comics because, yes, they're entertaining, but I feel like there's always something to take home from it as well. So those are all the reasons that I love DC Comics. Now, if you have a rebuttal, if you are like, yeah, all that's true, but... These other publishers have this going on, too. I definitely want to hear about it, because like I said, we're here to talk about what we love and hopefully tell other people or get other people on board with the things that we love, too. I hope nobody took this as me railing on Marvel Comics. I have just as many Marvel Comics as I have DC Comics. I'm just telling you what I love about the DC books in my collection. So I hope you found this video helpful as far as stories, if you're wanting to get into DC Comics. There are so many. Um, I'd recommend starting with any of the books that I just showed you uh, real quick. Um, if you're looking to get into Batman, there's a million, right? My first one was Batman Hush because it had really good artwork, but I love the Frank Miller Batman Year One, uh, The Dark Knight Returns. There's a lot of really cool stories. We'd be here all day talking recommendations, but I'll leave some in the description of this video. Hope you saw something you liked in this video, and if not, hey, that's cool. What I always say is that you can buy what you like, just make sure you read what you buy, and be nice to others, because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.